I tell you, I can feel the glory already here. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. Now listen, now listen. Nobody can, can explain how this conference is going to end. <laughs> One thing I know that is certain, the atmosphere is charged. Yeah, and if you are alive in the spirit, I believe you are, you better be focused because this is the climax of what you have been here for since yesterday. <laughs> wonderful word of God this evening that he was giving and giving and giving and giving and giving almost three hours may God bless you sir we are so happy yeah, almost three hours I'm so blessed from the time we came back almost six about five o'clock you've been on and I bless God that I, you know it's what I needed I don't know about you but I needed that word I don't know about you but I needed that word I bless God for that word and I bless God tonight and I just want to do what God has asked me to do. I don't preach like any of them that preach as I'm a prophet by calling. What I do is I take the word that God gives to me for the congregation and give it to them. God is saying to me here about when the Lord gave me the word about behold a lamb. Don't behold man. Don't behold problems. Don't behold issues. But behold the lamb. That when you behold him, he will expand and he will enlarge your core of greatness. Hear what the word of God says from verse 1. He says, Sing, O barren, thou that I did not dare, break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that did not travel with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife. Say unto the Lord, say the Lord. Verse 2 say, enlarge the place of thy tent. Somebody shout enlargement. He said, enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth. The curtains of thy habitation spread not, letting the cords and strengthening thy yokes. 
What is God saying to you here? Enlargement means stretch out from a place of limitation. Enlargement means no limits. Enlargement means overflow. It says stretch out your, your tent, stretch out your cord, elect in your cord. God has sent me tonight to come and say to you everywhere you've been concerned for years. God has sent me to come and tell you it's your season of enlightenment. God said to us in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 2. He said you dwell in a place so long. He said go up from that place and begin to go up now. Tonight is your place of getting out from a place where you've been dwelling. From a place of management to a place of overflow. From a place of pain to a place of abundance. From a place of shame to a place of favor. From a place of mess to a place of message. Somebody said there are no more dwelling in that place. The anointing in the house is lifting me up. The anointing in the house, the word of God that is being released in atmosphere is picking me into another dimension. Somebody say, a next dimension. You will not dwell where you've been dwelling. You will you've dwell in that place so long. This year, 2020, you are coming up from there. You are coming up from there. You are dead of increase in stretching. Somebody say, I'm stretching my cord. No limits. I just step no limits. I back no limits. Wherever God is, no limitation. God is not God of limitation. That's why He created man and woman. I put them in the garden of Eden. And He looks so big. He's telling us that I'm a God of space. And the whole earth belongs to me. And He blessed them with all the gold, all the blessings that is in the land. God has done the same thing to you. As God Lord, after this conference, open my eyes that I may see where you have planted me, that I may see what you have prepared for me. I do not want to see through other men. I want to see with my own eyes. I want to see with my own eyes. If you have a vision, if God called you, if God will give you assignment. When he called someone, someone was running to and fro to Eli. Until I said to him, go and say, yes, your servant hear it. When he now had he began to tell him what he wanted to do. And you'll be answering your call best by looking at other people. Somebody shall no limits. Does it mean that God do not want to rest? I mean, billionaires in the land, in Christian God. Does it mean that God want to see his children down? Does it mean that God want to see his children struggle, scratch before we eat? I know that I know that I know that I know the God who has called me. God who, who used me to prophesy to nations is going to pass. God who said when he said it is going to pass. That God has said to me, and their state shall behold the glory of God. Yeah. Next year here, many of you will testify. Yeah. Many of you will testify. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God, I just bless you for who you are. I just thank you for what you're about to do. I just thank you for you who started it. You cannot change. He said, enlightened. If you go to the book of, of uh, Second Kings chapter 6, the Bible said that the children of the prophets went to the prophet said, where we are dwelling is too small. He said, we want expansion. Oh my God. I want to hear somebody say, next year we are not using here. That it will be too small for us. Because the testimony in my life shall pull her from these people here. In the name of Jesus. They may know their God. We've been back up for a moment. Joy coming in the morning. The 
is weaker they did not know. It's weaker to alter and to change and to and to and to redirect you to the one God wants you to be. This is the weekend. Somebody said this is my sexual weekend. There is nothing God cannot do. There is no situation he cannot change. There is no man he cannot wipe away his tear. I do not worry for a child of God who knows how to pray, who is willing to follow God, who is saying yes to God. It does not matter the situation he's into. But the faithful day will come, a faithful day like this weekend, that will be dying in his presence. When God will put a word for you, and I know everybody here has received a word that will bring transformation, that will bring testimony, that will change your life in this conference, in this, in this conference. And I know of a thing that you will testify in this conference. In the name of Jesus. I remember getting to their church in Ukraine. When I got to the church, he was the one that picked me up that day. And he was telling me, oh, this is happening, that is happening. I said, God brought me at the right time. It has to be happening bad for we to know that it's God doing it. It's not mad. I don't know the complaint you have. I don't know what you're saying in your heart. That is not the working way. That one is not working well. This one is not working well. But I come to say to you, the Bible said that the mighty of the Lord is upon me to preach the good news and to the poor. The good news is being preached to you. And to open the door of prison to them that are bound and declare the favorable year of the Lord, which I'm declaring over you that your 2012 is your year of favor in the name of Jesus, it's your year of blessing in the name of Jesus, it's your year of testimony in the name of Jesus. There is something I heard the Lord say. Yes, Lord. I need seven people here. Seven people. Seven people. Who God promised me is going to raise seven millionaires in this con in this conference. Seven millionaires. People, people who says, who says, but I'm rich already. But God said. Stretch, stretch your cord. Seven people, seven people who will come out right now and say, I'm that one that God needs to stretch. I am ready for it. I don't know. I just say it and walk away and do what I'm doing. That was exactly what I did in the church when I came that day. He was the first one that came. He stood like this. I said, Bring her, go and sow seed. He was, look me up, look me down. I said, go and so see. You build in a house, you could not finish. But that house, look at this, my brother. As we came here, I was praying, say, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. I was just praying for the building. He was the first person that come out. Say, God, ask him to sow 90,000. I said, no, you have to say 120,000. I said, go and sow the seed. Right there, I said, wait. He rushed and cast the money. Come and put it in my hand. He became the first seed. Little did he know that the seed he was sowing was meant for his mother. Where is mama? Is mama here? Mama was walking here with wooden stick. The enemy piled the load upon her. That as she's getting weaker, her children will be getting weaker. Her children will not stand strong. I said, devil, you're a liar. Mama, that one will break it. Me and my brother yesterday. Me and my brother, all of you saw it. Mama started dancing. A, man who, a woman who came in here with ordinary, I mean with wood that could not move, she became a woman dancing. God told me to anoint seven people, seven people here tonight who says yes, I'm ready to sow a seed of 120,000 to support this ministry. You are not giving to me. You are supporting us. It's not here we are doing this conference. We do this conference many places. As I go back, I'm going to Liberia. The same thing we are going to do because Liberia, when you enter there, you will cry. Young men are dying. Their men are dead. All you can see that our men are people of 25 years. 
is women that are managing everywhere. Blood crying on the bride. People don't have nothing. I am not raising money to help. What they are doing is that any money you raise is like man of God telling you to buy my books. The book we use it to support our orphanage. It's not for my use. In short, we, that's why we print it in Nigeria. That's not how my book is. But you are buying it to support us. So that we can support our orphanage. And I get to know that my brother have orphanage here. A Christian must have a project of supporting somebody. If you are not fruitful in supporting somebody, not only preaching the word. God wants to raise people if I be a prophet of God, that's all I say. Seven people. Who will come and say, we are sowing seed of 120,000. That did not permit us to take testimony. There are people who are living testimony here of my seed sowing. When they sow seed, God uses seed to bless them. When they sow seed. I need two more people. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, my God bless you. Remaining one person. God bless you, my dear. May the Lord honor you. When we are using the seed, that's so you need to clear bills. We have so much bills to clear here yet. May God bless you. As you are out of so this seed, all I just, please, can I have some handkerchief? I just need seven handkerchief. There is a scripture the Lord gave to me when things were so difficult for me. It's in the book of Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45 from verse 1. That will be your portion, all of you that come out here. Where God give me this scripture, he said, behold, uh -uh. Isaiah 45, who is the person there? Isaiah 45, okay. Can I have a fast reader for me, please? From verse 1 to 5. Yes, sir. So he's anointed. Yes, sir. To stop his right hand. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. To subdue nation. To subdue nation. Before him. And to lose the noise of kings. To open before him. To open before him. The two level door gates. Uh -huh. And the gates. The gate, your gates shall not be shut anymore. Barrier breaking anointing that break every spirit of limitation and poverty shall speak upon your business, upon your life, upon your finance in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Jehovah God, I lift up things as points of contact. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I put it in their heart. Greatness shall fall into your hand. Greatness shall fall into your hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Greatness shall fall into your hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Greatness shall fall into your hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Greatness shall fall into your hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Greatness shall fall into your hands in the name of Jesus. Greatness shall fall into your hands in the mighty name of Jesus. When I was suffering in England, that there was no way, nothing seems to be working. The very year the Lord opened up for me, it was this scripture that he gave to me. And God said to me, this is a scripture you will use to bless every man under this very covenant of wealth. After a month of this very scripture, I was working as a senior social worker. I studied as a juvenile law, children law. But while I was working, I worked under social services. People who look after family and children and make sure everything is okay. So a one Nigerian girl, mistakenly, the first day we see a Nigerian child. Police called me that we need to go and pick the child that the mother beat her. And it pained my spirit because I have my own children. And that this, this girl that she was pregnant, 16 years old girl, and they told me to go and speak to her to do abortion. 
I said, no, I will never do that. When we come back, I cornered the girl. I said to her, you Nigerian child, your mother spoke to you, and you are new in the country. Let me tell you that we mess you up. Go back home. In short, I cornered that girl, switch off the camera, and beat her well, well. Say, you're a stupid girl. Why are you making, why are you putting your mother into trouble? So, <laughs> when the, my boss had it, she said to me, don't even, he said, go and talk to the girl. Talk her to go and do abortion. I said, Inside me, I said, Lord, is this the reason why you brought me back to London? If is this the reason, why am I here because of food? Father, take me back. The woman said to me, this is not church. If you don't do it, you will face disciplinary action. You know what? I said, I fire myself. She said, if I said, before you fire me, let me fire myself. On my way going, I heard the Lord say to me, righteousness will exalt a nation. But sin is a reproach. On my way going, I received this word. And um, a friend of mine called me, said to me, a family friend of mine called me, said, Choma, please, there is a house by the side of your house. Can you help me check that house? I was to say, you've seen jobless woman. Arrogancy. But I don't know what hurt my mouth. I said, okay. He said, go to the estate agent. When I got there, behold, it was my classmate. Ian Hopkins, a white guy. And he said to me, said, you still working for a uh, social? Why don't you come and make money? I said, what kind of money? He said, you can buy house and sell house. I said, can I buy house and sell house? He said, yeah. He said, I can help you. I said, but I don't have money. I just fire myself from work. He said, Did you, have you put in the paper? I said, no. When this thing happened, I'm telling you, oh my God, I wish many of you know me. And by God's grace, God will introduce me to you by my microphone and my ministry. When I go to that place, the guy took me said, go, you are going to look for this house. There is a house there. I can help you get a mortgage. I said, but I just left my job. And my papa has expired my student visa. He said, don't worry about that. Do you have driving license? I said, he said, we'll help you. I said, but I don't have money. So I get you mortgage with extra. And he got me mortgage of 125% mortgage. All I was looking for is how we get that money. Because my overdraft is finished. 1,000 pounds being spent, 200 less 1,000 overdraft. So you can understand my condition. And four children are there, and husband no work. Study. What will I do? There was no money. How can we live? I don't know. But you know what? This our God. He can surprise you. A week before that, I, I was paid overdraft. I mean, I was paid over time with almost 16,000 pounds. My pastor... I don't know if you know any of them, Jama, the Jama family, I'm sure you will know them. He, the church where I was that time, there was no rent. And God said to me, go and carry all the money in your account and pay the rent. I said, how can I do that? I need to buy this house. God said to me, which house? You can buy it. Go and carry the money and pay. I carried that. I called my husband. I said, see what God is saying. Isabel, don't put me in trouble. If God said it, do it when I drop that money then now next day to find out that I'm losing my job when I lose my job not knowing that God was taking me out of a place of counting of a place saying yes sir to people for a place people who I say yes sir to shall come and apply for work in my own company that very year my, this is my daughter she can tell you. It's there that we raise money to buy the, to build our building. We did not owe anybody. And God said to me, you will be a blessing to other nations. You, no man will come before you and remain the same. That's why you see, we have all these testimonies. Because somebody has paid the price. When you pay the price of giving, God will always know how to bless you. But some of us, we can't give. When opportunity like this come out, first of all, you think of how much you have. What will the money be? I've been in the airport. I came to Nigeria, minister finished. Somebody, my ticket cost me almost 900 pounds, which is almost 200,000. 
But the person I ministered to gave me 150, I told my brother. Then how do you expect me to pay for my... Are you are telling me, come, don't worry, bring the receipt. I gave you the receipt. You gave me 150. As I just went into my room. I bowed and I said, Father, thank you. I bless you. But you know what? On my way going back to London, a guy met me at the airport. Rushed me with a child. He said, this, this child, you prophesy over this child from television program. She said, Mommy, hold on here. I'm coming. He rushed into the car, to the bullet the chain, and changed 5,000 pounds and put in my hand. It's not a bad man. When you are a giver, you can never lack. If you want to be part of my ministry, so that testimony will be happening in your life, I'm telling you, learn how to sow. If you don't sow, you can never reap. My brother that is here, sowing has done, stand up, let them see. He's from Russia. Sowing has done a lot in his life. Sowing, he says he could not finish here, he's sowing that finishes. He has a factory down there. This my brother there, he's a man of God. He's a pastor. In their church, he's their sister. After their senior pastor, he's number two. But the conference, he showed that person will call me, Mommy, we are going into season. Please, show me your card number so that I can sow seed. And when I come, he will say, my seed has worked for me. Amen. It's a revelation. If you don't know it, if you read that for me, sir, in that very scripture, he said, I will show you the hidden treasures of the land. Every man has got a hidden treasure. Until you locate your hidden treasure, you can never, you know what happened, you will be walking on the surface. I will go before thee. Let like this conflict. Yes, sir, I will go before thee. I make the good God places. That means there are places that look rigor, rigor. That means the light of God will carry out of every road of rigor, rigor and bring you to a place of hidden treasures. It's not on the surface. Yes, sir. I will break in pieces. I will break in pieces. Oh my God. The gates of brass shall be broken in pieces over your life shall be broken in pieces over your destiny as you stand down to say yes in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I'm not happy you're not standing here because you're supposed to spend how much is it? No more than 20,000, less than 1,000 dollars. You that buy cars and get people. And I'm not happy you're not standing there because you guys are the ones that I know when God has extended your tent, I know I don't have no need. The songs that can come, listen, send me 20,000. They will say, Mommy, I have it. I don't have it. They will do it. Thank God your wife is standing in God for you. Because last year in IPS, I, I, IPCI, when I said God would examine exactly what I was talking, you came out. But this one, this year's one, this, this, RPCI in January 2013, there shall be many child dedication. Yeah. Children that people think that will never happen. I'm telling you, I enter a place today. I see the Lord break every, every yoke. Every yoke. I will just see yokes breaking. I don't know the cause that is holding you. It's broken. Please, if you have the money, if you don't have it, if you have the money, give it to Reverend John. Because, that, I mean, I, I can't take Naira to London. We don't spend Naira in London. But we need the money for work here. This church, the, I mean, this very charming manner global ministry is reaching out to people. Every money we raise here, if they pay me my expenses that I've been spending, the rest money, we will use it to support orphanage, support the widows, support the less privileged, support pastors that want to preach gospel, but they don't have good shoes to put on, they don't have cloth to put on, they're not sure where their next breakfast is coming. This is where my heart is. That's where my heart is. The Lord has been a blessing to me. I don't, 
What now will I eat again? Nothing. Thank God for Marianda. Bless God for Marianda. He's working for me. My husband is the best advertiser of Moringa. His stomach has flattened up. Everywhere he stays, he says Moringa. But Jehovah God, whom I serve, take you to another level. May Jehovah God, whom I serve, don't worry. Take you to a place of blessing. That this year, 2012, the blessings of 2012 will not bypass you. Yeah. It will not bypass you. Yeah. This one is going to build that house in your village expressly. Yeah. I see you buying land in a way. Amen. And you will build it expressly. Yeah. I don't know what you are building for the Lord. What do you want the Lord? What do the Lord want you to do for him? 